we're going to start with a broken down Matronix Dolphin M500. This was a top of the line machine in its day. You can see that this robot was always left in the pool. If you want to make your pool robot die, leave it in the pool. It had Bluetooth compatible power supply. The filters of the return valve flaps missing. They need to be replaced so that the debris does not go back into the pool. This has the RCD circuit breaker. We firstly check that the power supply is working. Ideally use a multimeter to test the output is about 28 volts DC. We can connect the robot to the working power supply. The robot is always tested upside down. We see no power into the robot. We can try a replacement power supply. Of course, if the fault lies in the robot or the cable, this will not work either. This is only shown to demonstrate that sometimes the supply is faulty. In this case, we have a fault to the robot. New power supply and no sign of life. Next, we test the swivel cable. This one is pretty corroded. We use some multi-grips to turn the cap. It's a bit hard to focus, but you can see the black tips on the pins. From being left in the pool, the contacts are starting to corrode. This shows pitting of the gold-plated contacts. Sometimes these pins stick in and do not connect. Checking connection to the motor. Take off the impeller cover. Remove the filters, this step can be bypassed if you want. Undo two screws each side that hold the top cover on. Go to the other side and remove the corresponding two screws. Move the cable grommet out of the way and lift the cover off. Unclip the two floats on either side of the motor block. This allows better access to the cable. Undo the screws on the yellow clips that secure the cable. Undo two clips. The cable plastic nut holds the connector in place. The plastic nut should not be too tight. This one looks like it has been in there a long time. Remember when replacing this nut that too much force can split it. The real seal is inside where the plug goes in. Grab the cable and pull straight upwards. The three pins should look like a gold colour. We see obvious corrosion here. One of the pins is so corroded that it is black. You could try sandpaper in a power drill to clean the pins. Make sure your sandpaper is not too brittle. A Dremel with a fine bit may also be used. Be careful not to trim too much off. Here I set the multimeter to DC volts and test the output on the cable. A reading close to 28 volts DC shows power is coming past the swivel cable connection. Clean inside all of the socket terminals. While you have the fine bit out on the Dremel, this can be used to clean inside the sockets. When the plug goes back, make sure the O-ring has some silicone lube. Here I am, I am just plugging the cable in to test it. In this case, we just put it in to check the connection. 
The robot is placed in the upside down test position. Power is applied and nothing. Motor block removal and disassembly. Remove four screws holding the block down. The block is held in place with extensions to the side gears. Each side has four screws to remove. Carefully lift the top of the side away from the top rollers. Under each slot you need to push the tab. If you do not push the tab it can snap off. This shows the four tabs per side. There they are. One, two, three, four, four. These side foam floats will fall out, so do not lose them. Check to see the condition of the roller bearings. Lifting this roller allows access to the removable shaft that connects to the motor. On the other side, we demonstrate again the release of the locking tabs. Once again, do not lose the foam floats and also check the opposite side bearings. Sometimes it is easier to remove the two outer rollers. This will loosen the drive track. You can then pull out the main roller bearing. The main bearing has the drive shaft. You then do the same for the other side. Pulling off the other main roller bearing allows the drive shaft to come out. Once both drive shafts are removed, the motor housing lifts out. Opening the motor housing. Be careful not to snap off the four side clips as they do not fully open. You may be safer to actually clip the four side clips off completely. They do get in the way and are easily snapped off. To remove them simply press them vertically down. Use a fine blade to start the case opening. Carefully lift from each corner. Once the seal starts to open, it becomes easier. When you get the box open, immediately look for water damage. This looks dry inside. You will see a packet of moisture absorbent beads. There is no obvious damage to the circuit boards. This internal plug is where the power comes into the box. We can see a small amount of corrosion here. Again use the Dremel to clean inside the socket. Leaving corrosion will promote future corrosion. Clean the pins as well. I actually later replaced the entire internal cable with a new one. I hooked it back up to check that the motors run. If the out of water test, the impeller spins and the side drive motors spin in one direction and then re in reverse. Here I am checking the side motors. While we have access, I wire wheeled some corrosion off. Silicone grease or silicone oil is used to lube the O-rings. Sometimes I will drop a few silica gel balls into the socket before replacing the plug. If you do this, do not put so many silica gel balls in that it affects the connection. Make sure that the plug is pressed home firmly. 
The main seal is with the plug pressed in. The grommet and screw cap just hold it down more securely. Remember not to over tighten the plastic screw cap or nut. Do the out of water test with the box closed. You would be wise to put the motor housing into the water for testing. This is the upside down test with the robot fully assembled. The impeller spins, the fan can be heard. The drive tracks move in one direction and then they reverse. After a while the robot senses less resistance on the impeller. This is how it knows that it is out of the water. The robot will then switch off. Here is the robot working. Thanks for watching.